Is so, this the same song? This is the uh, spooky music song. Ah, well, the uh, yeah, shock yeah. line shot song. Mm -hmm. I faved it after you linked it last time because I really liked it. So, where are my fly hands? I imagine this is one of the... Uh, so, where would Lauren be holding out to okay. uh, do this experiment? Um, she doesn't want to be too far away from the pods. So okay. I was thinking either in the actual, like, medical room or 12 isn't too terrible, terribly far either. Yeah, 12 is normally used as, like, a storage room. At least this 12 is. At least that 12 is, okay. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think. Oh, 15 is actually, like, literally right there, the common room. Okay. All right. So, Lauren... You're hanging out in the uh, common area. You feel that, you know, sensation that you felt. This is your second time now doing this experiment. The first time uh -huh. it was... Say again? Uh, it was a laugh. <laughs> okay. Uh, the first time it was kind of uneventful for a bit. And you started to, you know, feel a bit drowsy and whatnot, and you probably then went to go to your Cairo mm -hmm. pod. Um, but that, that sensation where you can see as things, well, the ship starts to enter in the shock point, that, that moment where everything seems to kind of slow down, and just a wave of well, color washes over you. You can feel it on your teeth, you can taste the colors, you can smell emotions that aren't your own it's very well disorienting very confusing mm -hmm. and then just as quickly as all there it, it was gone it's washed over you and it's the ship is properly within shock space hmm. now now the disorientation of like the smells and tastes and stuff that happened the first time too yeah okay that's that's pretty normal like sometimes it's not as powerful maybe it's just things are kind of kind of wonky there's like a cladoscope of colors and then it's gone other times your sensations are messed with for a couple of seconds and then it's gone it's not normally a good feeling it's unnatural yep, very re much rolled some reaction there she doesn't like it <laughs> <laughs> all right a, a, a common reaction to it <laughs> No and... scrunchy. Like, mm. And you're not feeling all that well about it, but as you are sitting down waiting for something to happen, she what looks like a shimmer, vaguely humanoid in appearance. Moving through Varasi's halls. You can see, and as you focus on it more and more, you see not more details of it, but more of what it's doing. More of that it's not alone. There's other humanoid shimmers also around the room. Oh. And I imagine Lorne's looking around, right? Yeah. Okay, so Lorne, looking around the common room, you see there's. There's at least nine of them. There's three sit set it at this very same table you're at. Mm -hmm. You can see vague gestures of what you can only assume to be their arms, but you can't see any digits. It's almost like they're communicating with each other, but oh. none of them seem to notice you. Others are going around. It looks like one's even off by a corner, maybe cooking, but where they're doing the motions as if you're stirring some sort of pot mm -hmm. there is no pot there and there is no stove there Ooh, that's neat and as you continue to look around more and more well are they familiar sh shimmers come none actually no okay. in total though you you figure there's maybe 12 separate entities mm-hmm um, some seem to be interacting with others. Others don't seem to notice different ones here and there. It's 
and none of them seem to real realize your presence is there either. Okay. It's like watching a image move, but well, you're part of the image, but you just can't interact with it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You have all of the information there, but at the same time, you don't understand the information given to you. It's hard to truly understand what's going on. What do you do? She will continue watching them. Because if there's something okay. she is good at, it's people watching. Okay. <laughs> Roll me a uh, straight attention. Okay. Followed by a uh, cold. Okay, straight attention. One. Awesome. I'm glad that wasn't a fail. <laughs> and then my cold. Oh. Okay, so thankfully this isn't going to affect our, uh, you know, lovely, mm -hmm. what you call it, but for the rest of this, <laughs> yeah, but for rest of the uh, scene, you're going to be deemed at two cold rather than rather than going up by one. Okay. So you're going to so you're going to be taking a minus one to any fervor cold stuff you need to make. Okay. So that means that uh, as you're watching them moving around. You're starting to notice more and more features as, well, you don't really realize how long you've been watching here, but as you continue to watch, more of their appearances starts to become clearer. The three who are sitting next to it, near you at the table, one of them is gaunt, skeletal looking at this point, flickering between a healthy looking woman and a skeletal figure with its skin mummified against its flesh. Oof. Oh, sorry, bones. Yeah. The other one uh, may be a handsome young man, but every so often his head becomes transparent, almost. Except for his jaw. It's His jaw is always there. Oh my. And then it comes back into focus again, as if his head was always proper. The last one being a never man. This this one a bit older. You don't see any unusual changes to him, but like the others, he seems he seems to instead age. He gets younger and older and younger and older as he interacts with him, and as the other two seem to have well, die is the only real explanation for it. Mm -hmm. That's when his appearances look oldest. His facial expressions are more numb. And kind of even get a little glimpse of sorrow there, almost. It's apparent that of these three, this one was probably the only one to survive whatever Happened. fell to the other two. The others in the room, there seems to be a cluster off to the side where someone is cooking. And I'm sure, Lorne, you start to also look at them, and you can see that all of them grow gaunt and skeletal as you watch them. Until there's nothing, until they're all just mummified, still talking with each other, still cooking and having a good time, but hmm. every so often you can see another shimmer as if moving left to right all of them at the same time and these shimmers push through the hall of Arasi right next to them and as that happens you can see the walls of Arasi itself kind of warp ever so slightly as if they were about to break and then it all resets back to them being more human there's one cooking looks to be a, a tall broad soldier uh, shouldered a man mm -hmm. you can see the, the bony growths upon their head and even on their arms clearly an og Another one also sharing similar features, staying pretty close to him and looks like they're helping him cook. 
Um, you can't tell if it's a man or a woman. There's much more uh, androgynous. Mm -hmm. The other four even mix of men and women, it's too hard to make out any any real details and they almost look uh, much paler than many of these other specters you're seeing so far. Almost as if, well, for one reason or another, their forms aren't nearly as defined, not as crisp. And you're not too sure why that is, but still all the shit same. The six of them every so often are just sucked through the wall. It's just those then, not the other yeah, ones. It's, yeah, just, just those six seem to get sucked through the wall. Oh. There's another group, this one of four, who at first you thought that they uh, were just traveling through and then again and again. And it's as as they come into focus, it's certainly they're traveling through, but they're wearing clearly armor, carrying some sort of well, weapons. One of which having a massive looking hand cannon, the other three serrated blades and axes. And it's not until they come into full focus that you've only heard stories of things like these. You've never seen anything in person or, well, learned too much about them, but I want to make sure I get the name correctly. You know, these are marls. Some of the worst of the worst Vikings. Well, sorry, not uh, raiders in the uh, explored galaxy. A people whose entire culture involves around pillaging, destroying, and looting. People who like to assault ships and get nice and personal with it. And they charge into this common area from the uh, from the south end charging up north and they do it and again as they again. and they do it again and again and you can see the, the one first with a hand cannon moves off to the side and they seem to clearly fire at their entire body rocking with it before they suddenly just their whole body grows transparent and seems like the space around them gets hotter. You can f see the steam rising from that area. And then the other two, ooh, sorry, three, one of them is, you can visibly see as their arm is, well, broken off as something impacts her, but they keep on charging forward before they stumble to the ground at the end of the common room. And the other one, running straight for where the main common table should be, mm -hmm. almost passing for you. As they, their body rocks back as they fall into the common table as something hit them in the head. Like with one of the others that are currently seated at the common table, most of her head growing transparent. And the last one with the, uh, these wicked looking, well, weapons, you can see they charge up against another specter which appears only in this moment mm -hmm. where their axe drives down into that individual and slicing it clean off. You can see where their limb was once there and then it's gone before the individual whose details become more crisp the longer you watch this melee unfold. They drive their own weapon, some sort of knife, right up into the chin and thus head of the Marl, and the two of them collapse together. And then the last group that you see are both off by the side of the of the common room. Looks like they're just playing cards. And as they play the cards they both seem to just grow old and eventually there's no one sitting there playing cards 
from the somewhat horrific sights that you've been watching this entire time, mm -hmm. all for it to just seemingly with these two, nothing, you don't get the sense of something bad happening with them, just the sense of two individuals who've served on this vessel. Mm -hmm. Gone through the passage of days. time. Yeah. Is there anything Lorne does? Lorne will... Obviously, she's been paying attention to everything, as you described. Um, but if she finds that focusing on something makes it more apparent, then she'll shift her focus from the violence to the more calm people, um, like the people near her or... Um, the two in the corner playing cards. Okay. And she'll just she'll watch them for a bit and have some f theories bubbling in her little curious brain on um on the the jump itself. Cuz like you said that um there's always stories about how jumps are, right? Yeah. Cuz there's stories about other people seeing stuff. Yeah. Um, has it been s not circulated, but are there like rumors and stuff that you s you see people who've died or blah blah blah? Or oh, all the or... time. Okay. They're uh, it's commonly referred to ghosts of a shock. Mm -hmm. Um, where people who served aboard vessels will claim to have see, see you know old people that served on the vessel mm -hmm. may have died on it or maybe spent most of their lives on it and a lot of that gets filed away of just you know paranoia and hallucinations of someone who then read about the history of a ship and then their mind filling in the blanks as per normal nothing can be proven right oh definitely lauren doesn't i don't know if lauren so much as believes in ghosts but she believes in this dream yeah and what she's seeing now makes her feel like it's almost like the ship is taking a dip and well. is kind of just giving her a glimpse into other consciousness well there are many within your fate that do believe that the shock points are the closest things humanity have to stream and that the entire reason the shock shock lanes work is because the stream's existence everything's interconnected shock space is just that web that interconnects everything this solidifies her faith <laughs> <laughs> but I need, you make me, I, I need you to make me a never a cold of and course. a never attention okay well, remember you're taking a minus one to your school now yeah um okay hold Right, you're good. And then let us willpower this attention. At this point, I have a fuck ton, anyways. <laughs> uh, it's not like it matters. <laughs> <laughs> Shakes fist angrily. All right, so <laughs> with that, you're able to. Uh, you're watching the the group that is closest to you at first, and slowly around you. At first you don't exactly notice all the cues that you're watching as they continue to replay the same scenes, but those scenes grow longer and longer, and you start to be able to hear the wisps and whispers of these individuals. You start to be able to smell the coffee that one of them is drinking. You can feel and taste the uh, smoke that the woman is, you know, keeps on bringing to her lips. Mm. And as these things start to come to more focus, you begin to look around and you realize the infrastructures are faintly there. They're no longer nearly as crisp as they were before, but the Rossi looks different, like there's a uh, overlay over it, as if you're seeing a different time of a Rossi. It's still the vague shape of a common area, except the kitchen is more spread out. 
the, cu the cupboards are made of a different material. There's new labels across everything. Some of the lights, which on the Rossi are kind of old, look new. Ooh. Some of the patchwork that and, uh, you know, character of a Rossi that you've always noticed and seen isn't there. Many of the sofas are crisp, clean, white material rather the, the than the old leaves. bird feeling of the ship is not so yeah, old. It's, <laughs> no, it, it feels different. It feels new. It feels young. Yeah. <laughs> and you get the sense of that as you still can't exactly understand the words that are being spoken by these individuals, but you, you, you also get the sense that there's more individuals here, but you just can't see them. And as you continue to focus, that's when things begin to get a little bit more weird. Was there uh, a time limit that Lorne was suggested to have made her way back to the pods? Um, only real suggestion was don't be up long. Was there a limit? <laughs> was there an there approximation was... for how long it is? <laughs> uh, there wasn't, but um, it, it's depending upon who you spoke to, you, you would get a different reaction. Okay. Some what people was... would be just like, don't do that. The captain would be like, uh, you no know, more in a few hours. Okay. Um, I imagine your your glorious doctor, Ray, would be like, don't be stupid. You're right. <laughs> Go to bed. <laughs> Ash would just shrug. Amanda would look at you like you're a fool and say, no more than four hours at most. Even then, you're yeah. cutting it. Well, Mel bad. said a couple hours, right? So Yeah. Is it possible to still keep track of time on a ship on during jump? Yeah, it, it's possible. It's just, you can get wonky. Okay. How uh, much things time stop do working I at times. figure time has passed right now? Um, roll me straight attention. Okay. <laughs> Two. So, you think maybe an hour has passed at this point. Okay. It's kind of hard to say. It's normally, you know, watches and things need to get reset when, mm -hmm. you know, but it feels like an hour has passed. Well, we'll stay up until it feels like two hours. <laughs> okay, so with that in mind, you do start to notice that the three who are soon around you eventually. Oh, she'll um she'll maneuver herself so she's in the least obtrusive place. All right, so so you start to do so as things seem and, to be solidifying. <laughs> yeah, and as things get more and more crisp, more and more clean, more and more clear, you notice, Lauren, that the man who oh, lost part of his head—he's. For some reason, he's permanently stuck like that now. And it's crisp and it's clear, and you can see the various bits of his skull, and you can see that whatever it was was not clean. It was not pretty. Mm -hmm. Looking at him, you can see there's bits of metal just shoved around his arm, his chest, arms and legs and yeah, his right arm is mangled and looks like it's crushed and it's just hanging there but it still seems like he's talking to the others mm -hmm. the woman meanwhile she's permanently stuck looking like a skeletal figure her you, you get a sense that her whispers become raspy and every so often you swear it sounds like someone's choking for air but it's the last one which is most interesting, as while the, those two seem to still be stuck in conversation, they turn their head to look to you, Lord. Right at you. There's a sad smile on their face. 
and you can hear words spoken from them, clear words. Don't pity the dead, for they are dead. Pity the living, for you still suffer. What is your story? They kind of shake their head a bit before they say, My story ended long ago. My story was that I was suffering in life. I think I missed some of that. His story was what? Of uh, suffering and life. But if you want to know, he kind of gestures to his fellows and he says, I was her captain. I led them through. I watched them die. And yet, here I live. I didn't die here. I know that. I don't know where I died. And as he speaks, his form loses that spectralness, that slight transparency that they all seem to still have. Till he looks physical, he looks real. You can smell the faint sense of alcohol on him, the uh, odor of smoke that just ingrained into his clothing. You can see all the wrinkles and age and sorrow on this man's face as he continues to look at you, Lorne. Do you blame yourself? Every captain blames themselves for the loss of their crew. I'm sure they believe you were a good captain. It does not matter what they believe. It matters what I believe kind of looks off towards a section of the uh, Rossi where he kept on seeing those specters fall into. And he looks at that for a long time, Lauren, and you can see there's almost like heat and steam building up at that point mm -hmm. before he looks back to you and says, this isn't a place for the living. It's not even a place for the dead. I understand you're curious, but your curiosity invites things. She nods. Would you suggest I leave? He nods his head and says, Leave and do not seek answers for things you can't understand. He, his head kind of shoots towards the uh, that section again, and you can see now the size of a Rossi are starting to almost bubble, as if something is actively melting the hall. And you can feel the heat. You can smell the paint chipping and melting as the fumes start to fill the air. And it's it's not a very good smell. As the man mm -hmm. speaks again and says. The dead are already dead. It's for living. You should pity. And he sounds, despite his words, almost afraid. What do you do? The, the warmth and stuff, that's building, because before it was more of a wispy, but that's solidifying as well, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. And he did say to leave. Um, she will... And is calming, and basically arbiter, because that's what she is. Um, and he's afraid, and arbiters help with that fear. Or they try to she will try to urge some calmness into 
her words. Take care, Captain. You have my blessing. He looks back to you and you can see there's a, a very faint smile there. And if you'd like, you could roll a uh, clout fast talk and even add your sway. Ooh. <laughs> okay. Fast talk is baby. Okay. So that's five. Hell yeah, I'm well powering this. Four. So, he does smile at that, he'll say, I will, and he looks a little bit more confident towards that section of a hall which is beginning to clearly melt and cave in, mm -hmm. and you can start to see the wisps of something dark. but. As this nameless captain continues to stare at those things, you can see he... the other specters in him, all of them start to face it. Mm -hmm. Even those that were fighting seem to stop in their fighting, as if to look at what is to come. I will jump <laughs> in, and because he had bade me to leave. So she'll have begun making her way towards okay in the hallway so you're able to do that and you get a sense that your words at least inspired this captain enough to maybe face whatever their fear was as those sense of how Varasi is different it's still different even when you leave the hall but it's still arranged the same way it's just things look newer things look different mm -hmm. but whereas before you could clearly hear the sizzling and bubbling and the starts of something sinister whispering that's the only way you can describe these sounds they grow f fader not because you're moving further away no no you know why it's growing fader it's because you managed to give hope to the dead Hmm. At least that's how you take it, Lord. And how she interprets it. <laughs> how you interpret it. But the question is there as you go to your chiropod and you know, press the automated system of what do the dead have to fear if they're already dead? That is a good question. He did say fear the living. Or pity, pity the living. Sorry. And yet, something made all of those specters in all of their different times stop to stare. And that's where we'll end that. Oh. Nice. A dab. A dab. I hope you enjoyed your experience. Chance. Yeah, I did. Holy Thank you. shit, dude. <laughs> Bro. Yeah.